I want to give you a little brief history on how the modular murals came to be. In 1978, I was working for a group called the Starving Artists Art Group. Uh, what they did was sold paintings for nothing over $39.95, and you still see them on television. They still sell these paintings for nothing over $39.95. If their motif was uh, green, I... they'd put their green painting on the wall, and uh, the next show they would come back and buy another painting, a two foot by three foot painting, and hang that next to their other picture. And they didn't care what the painting was as long as it was a green, because their motif was green. I said, hey, why don't we come up with a larger painting? And they could buy sections of the paintings as they could afford them. Uh, you could start with a 2 by 3 and stack them with another 2 by 2 And it, the original concept was a, a triptych or a diptych. And uh, I said, well, this system will be a modular system where they could buy multiple paintings to make one painting, but they would could, as they could afford each piece of the painting. So that was a wonderful idea. I thought I'd develop that idea. But there, and as you know, to hang a painting, you have to put a, a piece of wire on the back of the painting and ha uh, put a nail on the wall and hang it. Well, as you know, to hang a painting, you have to put a, a piece of wire on the back of the painting and ha uh, put a nail on the wall and hang it. Well, that works just fine, but when you have multiple paintings, where do you put the nail on the wall? I thought one solution would be to hang a sheet on the wall and they would show you where to put each nail on the wall. That was fine until the physics got involved. As you know, uh, paintings want to shift, and this was just a nightmare. They would continue. If you shut the door, these paintings would all shift, and you'd be constantly, constantly trying to rearrange this to look right. But I did come up with, I needed something uh, that would lock the, the two frames together. And imagine these being two frames. What I did do is I take a, a piece of tin, and I put a shim on it to give me a quarter inch of uh, space in between the two paintings. And that way, I would have I would get, put a screw here and here and here, and that would keep that locked together. And that's what I needed. I needed something that would lock the two frames together so they wouldn't shift anymore. But the only problem there was it would did this, and I couldn't put another one like this because how would you get behind the painting to do that? I had to come up with something that locked these two together without this piece of tin. This was a, my first idea. What I thought I could use was a clip that people that the hardware store sold for uh, putting legs in furniture. Uh, I would take this clip, put another one on the back. Uh, the only problem here was it would slide out like this. Uh, I could put a nail here and a nail there, but it wouldn't give me the versatility that I was looking for. And the second problem was this. It, shifted, it would rotate because the barrel was round. It was just a matter of physics. So what I had to do, I looked, the clip idea was a fantastic idea. The only problem was it needed to have like a, a dog ear bent on the, the ends of it. And so I had to take a pair of pliers and bend a little piece of the, the, a dog ear into it so it wouldn't slip out. And that worked just fine. And the fact, a friend of mine, but it became a problem to take a pair of pliers and bend each one. A friend of mine came up with this. He was a machinist. He would take the clip and put it in this piece of furniture. And you'd put it on there like so. Hit it with a hammer. And it would bend the little dog ears that I needed in the, in the uh, clip. That gave me a little number that looked kind of like this. And that was another wonderful advancement. I came up with a, I developed a piece of molding that would accept that little dog ear, like so. And that gave me uh, this little gem, which worked out for a real long time. As a matter of fact, we used it to uh, develop the first mural. The only problem was that it still wasn't versatile enough. I wanted the versatility of being, this still was round and it still had tendencies to to just be a nightmare. What I wanted to do was come up with something that was positive locking. And that's how we developed this guy here. We came up with a positive locking guy here. We came up with a positive locking clip. What I did was I took a piece of bar stock and I milled it out to give me this uh, square here that I needed. And here's my little dog ears that I came up with. We milled it out, chopped it into pieces, and one slides like this to give me, when, once this is tightened, it gives you a positive lock, locking system. 
And then I developed a piece of molding that would accept this new clip. And here's this new piece of molding. And it's a, it's a wonderful, stable uh, piece of plywood. This is an apple ply. This is another piece of ply. And plywood is just very, very stable and a wonderful product to work with. So now th let me show you how easy this is to lock together with a couple of murals. Murals right here. What we'll do is bring them together. Put a clip here and a clip here. Bring these two together like so. Lock them with an Allen wrench because this isn't machined Allen screw. Take this one here, do the same here, tighten them up, making sure everything's lined up right. And look how easy that was. Couldn't be easier. Get them nice and tight. And once these are locked into place and tightened, you can hang it on the wall because now it's real sturdy and you can put your hardware anywhere you want to on the backs of this this is plywood here and uh, you can put your lag bolts anywhere on the wall you can find your studs it's very versatile and that's what I wanted the versatility so let's go ahead and put the mural uh, the, the artwork on there and these panels which are another plywood very strong plywood Just slip in there like so there's one and here's the other there you have it. Couldn't be couldn't be easier. Now you just take a, a pair of screw a, a screw here, lock that in here, lock that in there, and it's solid. It's a, it isn't going anywhere. And that is what we're using today. Uh, we love modular mirrors. I just wanted to show you a little uh, brief history on how I got from this little clip to this beautiful piece of artwork, I call it artwork, I just wanted to show you what it takes to get an idea going. And thank you very much and I hope you enjoy Modular Murals. Thank you.